Okay, and this is lesson 8.2 on Introduction to Logarithms. And today we're mainly going to look at um, uh, writing, when we have something in exponential form, writing into logarithmic form and vice versa. Okay, so as you can see here it says logarithms are another way to write exponential equations. So we've been used to looking at exponential form and we say 2 raised to the 4th power equals 16. Okay, so we're going to put 16, whoops, get my tablet here equals 16, okay? Now, in order to rewrite it to logarithmic form, we would say this is log base 2 of 16 equals 4. Okay, and what we're doing here is we're taking the 2, which is our base, and making it the base of the log. So we'll have log base 2, and you can see, and maybe if I highlight, that'll help. This matches this spot, and we can see that 16 Okay, so we're saying log base 2 of 16 equals 4. Let me try to get one more way to highlight. And we're going to write the 4 over here. Okay, so we can see where the connection is here. Okay, so your base here is your base here. Your exponent here is actually going to be what is it equal to. Okay, so think 2 raised to which power equals 16. 2 raised to what power will give me 16 when you're looking for that answer. Okay, and we do have some, um, we want to identify what each thing um, of this equation is, which variable represents, and how they can be rewritten. So b, again, we're going to call the base. c is the exponent in this example. And A, we call the argument. Okay, so you can use this as your basis of how to convert. And I think this visual up here with the highlighting is also very helpful. All right, so we also have some special logarithms. Common logarithm equals base 10. Okay, so log base 10 of x will also be mainly viewed as log x. If you see that, assume it's base 10. Just like when we see square roots, we don't always put the 2 as the index, but we know that it is the square root. This is, this is going to be known as base 10. And a natural log, it has a base of e. And so log base e of x would just be written as natural log x. Okay, and we'll talk about in a, in a minute what e actually represents. All right, converting of exponential and logarithmic equations, we're going to fill in this table. So if I have this in exponential form, I want to rewrite it in logarithmic form. So I'm going to say log 9 is my base of 81 will give me 2. So 9 to the squared does give me 81. That's the relationship there. If I've given this one in exponential form, I'm going to write, write it in log form, log base 8 of 1 over 64 equals negative 2. So 8 to the negative 2 power does equal 1 over 64. Now I'm giving it, giving it in log form, and I don't see a base, so I know that it's going to be my common log. So I know it's going to be 10 to the second power equals 100. Okay, and we know that that is true. 10 squared is 100. If I have e to the x power equals 8, I can write that as natural log. Okay, I don't have to write log base e. I can say natural log of 8 equals x. Okay, so there we're just converting from one form to the other. Let's go to the next page. And we're going to evaluate logarithms algebraically. Okay, two different methods. Method 1, I'm going to rewrite it. <clears throat> um, into exponential form. So 4 to the x power, oops, that's not x, to the x power equals 64. And then if you l watched the lesson yesterday um, on exponential, solving exponential equations with same base, you could rewrite this as 4 to the x power equals 4 to the third power. And using same base equality, um, we know that the exponents will equal each other, so we can have x equals 3. And we solved our problem there. That's one method. Method 2, 
we can just think 3 to what power will give me 27. Okay, it's more of a logical way of thinking. 3 to what power will give me 27? And I know that answer is 3. 3 to the third power gives me 27, so x must be 3. Okay, so you don't really have to do the algebra there, but more so know the logic behind it. All right, so for letter A, you could do it either way, either method. Um, in this case, I'm going to think 3 to what power will give me 243? And I know that's 3 to the fifth power is 243. Therefore, x must be equal to 5. Okay, same with this one. I could rewrite it if I want. 4 to the x power equals 1 16th. And I know that in order for this to be true, x would have to be negative 2. Letter C. You could rewrite it or think, this is a little trickier, 64 to the what power will give me 8? And when you're thinking you're going to have a smaller um, uh, number, it's a little bit trickier, right? When you have a larger number and then you're doing it to an exponent, it's supposed to be a smaller number. So it's probably easier if we rewrite it, 64 to x equals 8, and then use that same base property. So we'll have 8 to the 2x power equals 8. So we now know that 2x equals 2x is going to be 1 and x will equal 1 half which would make sense right so you would say 64 to the 1 half power which is actually the square root of 64 equals 8 and so that is true okay we also um, can evaluate logarithms using our calculator and sometimes you want more um, of a decimal answer um, of course we're going to have to round it doesn't usually come out perfect. In fact, it's not likely at all. <laughs> but um, we will round four decimal places. Okay, so I will show you on the calculator here. Okay, get my clicker. All right, so we're going to use, you can see that we have a log button right here. So I'm going to choose log, and I want it of 225. And I just click enter, and you can see we get the answer right there. And we're going to round to, and I can scoot this over a little bit so you can see that. Okay. So we're just going to round it to four decimal places. So I'll go back, and I'll write approximately, we write the squiggle line because it's approximately, we are rounding. Okay. And then we are going to um, do the natural log of 14. Okay, so we did common log, log, uh, log 225. Now we'll do the natural log. So we'll go back to our calculator. Okay, and I'm going to do natural log of 14. And I get 2.6391. If I round it. Okay, so it's the same steps as above, but use, in, uh, use the natural log button. Okay, so we have the log button and natural log on the calculator. Now, if we do not have the base as 10, okay, it makes it a little more complicated. On the calculator, um, there isn't a log base 2, a log base 15, or whatever we're doing. So we actually have to rewrite it as log 50 over log 2. Okay, so it's like we're going to divide it. So that's the way we need to type it in the calculator in order to find it. So it's called the change base formula. Okay, and it would be the same if you had natural log as well. And you can see that right underneath on the um, handout. So let's put this in our calculator. Log of 50. Here's my log 50 divided by log of 2. And you can see we'll get approximately 5.6439, 5.6439, okay? And again, you can see the property, the change of base formula right here um, in order to know how to rewrite that and use it on your calculator. So if you go to your calculator, you can type it in, and you would get, for this one, approximately 1.913. 8, then you would do the natural log of 106, and you get 4.6634, and these are all approximate, 
to four decimal places. And this one you'd have to rewrite on your calculator log of 68 divided by log of 3, which is approximately 3.8408. And there you have it. I wanted to take a look at what natural base E represents. Um, and it's, by definition, the number E is defined as the number of this expression. So it's E equals parentheses 1 plus 1 over N to the nth power as N approaches infinity. So we're thinking that as we um, substitute in numbers, it's as N is getting close to infinity, and we know infinity is not an actual number, it's an idea um, <clears throat> of a very large number. Okay, and it, it, the number E is a certain irrational number. It re represents the equation above, which we use for many problems that occur in nature. So to have you guys um, have a better grasp of what this means, um, I created this table. And the idea is you would get on your calculator and you type in um, your equation into the function and then you substitute in each of these numbers and get the um, decimal to round it to the six decimal places. Okay, and you can see we start with when we substitute one in, we get two. And then it increases a little bit and a little bit and at some point, as we get it to a very large number, as we're going to infinity, the number kind of ends up being the same. Okay, so the idea is, is E is not just um, an exact number, it's irrational, kind of like pi, if you think of it that way, and it'll continue going on and on and on, um, but that's what we're representing when we talk about the natural logs, okay? So we can say, as n move to moves towards infinity, the answer becomes almost the same irrational number, okay? And we can see that um, e to the first power, if you type that in your calculator, would give you this um, approximate um, number, okay? So kind of help you have an idea um, what e represents instead of just saying, hey, we use this natural base e, and you don't have any context to it. So I wanted to kind of give you that um, little bit of knowledge.